Okay, in this video we're going to introduce Cobra's new Cobra Friction Drive or CFD or as most people call it as just our slipper clutch. Um, this has been around since 2005 in various forms, although the new form that we introduced last summer is by far uh, the best incarnation yet of, uh, of this device. And, and pure and simple, this, this thing is designed to allow your drive line to live. Um, any uh, 50cc automatic motorcycle puts a lot of torque uh, into the drive line, especially when the rider lands from jumps uh, with the gas on. Um, that means the clutch is locked at that point and everything from the contact patch at the rear tire all the way to the to the piston is one locked mechanism at that point and what the slipper clutch does is freeze that up so that when you do have big jarring landings and things like that um, the device takes that torque rather than transmit it into uh, the, the transmission gears for example which often break if you don't have a device like this so that's why uh, you have it and we're going to show here a, a little bit behind the adjustment process and a little bit more about how it works all right here's a quick breakdown of the pieces and parts that make up a uh, cobra friction drive first of all you've got the castle nut uh, we'll go into its importance later when we actually are making some adjustments uh, then there's the Belleville spring that is actually a spring that keeps the tension on the system and keeps the proper torque on the system. Uh, and then we have our front and back backing plates. These are really lightweight aluminum backing plates that, uh, that grab onto the input shaft into the transmission. And inside of each one of those backing plates is a special material friction disc uh, on either side uh, that, uh, that, that actually transmits the, uh, the friction between the input and the output of the friction drive. Finally we've got a couple other parts. One is the replacement brass bushing and finally uh, the primary gear which transmits torque from the crankshaft uh, into the friction drive and then ultimately into the transmission. Alright so the first step in check and slipper adjustment if you're going to do it on a stand is to drain the oil, uh, remove all six of the clutch cover bolts and just pop the cover off. You can also do this with the bike laying on its side and uh, if you're going to try to do a quick adjustment that's probably the easiest way although it's going to be hard to get to the sprocket on the other side as you'll see in a minute if you don't drain the oil and do this completely. After the clutch cover is off the next step is to put the gear stop tool in place That keeps the primary gear from moving uh, at all. Make sure it's properly seated. Okay, with the slip gear tool still in place on the clutch side, uh, we're gonna install what we call the sprocket socket on this side. It's basically a uh, socket attachment that you can attach your torque wrench to. It bolts right up to the sprocket. You don't have to remove the chain, very easy. Uh, get that in place, make sure it's torqued down nice and tight. With the slip gear tool in place and the sprocket socket attached to the other side, now it's time to check the slip torque. And it's as easy as setting, if you have one, it makes it a lot easier to have an electronic torque wrench. If you don't, uh, make sure you just go up to the 60 foot-pound mark uh, on the dial gauge. But basically you want to check the breakaway torque just like we did there. Uh, and the point is to see if you break away at below 60 foot-pounds. If it's below 60 foot-pounds, it's time for an adjustment. If it's above 60 foot-pounds, it's holding anything above 60 foot-pounds, then you don't have to touch it. Now it's time to make the adjustment, so come back over to the other side of the bike. And the first step is to remove the cotter key. And the second step after removing the cotter key is to find the nearest trash bin and throw it away. You never, ever, ever want to reuse this cotter key. They're fairly brittle, and there's a good chance that uh, one of the tangs is going to break and end up in your transmission, and that's an expensive lesson to learn. So just toss it. We've got packs of 10 of these things that uh, you can buy very inexpensively, uh, so you always have a fresh one on hand. All right, so the next step is uh, keeping your locking mechanism, the locking tool in place. Um, basically just tighten up, and this is a left-hand thread, so tightening is uh, turning to uh, in the counterclockwise direction. You wanna tighten it one slot on the castle nut, and that's all it takes. Any more than that, and your slip torque is going to be set at a too high of a value. So one 
slot on the castle nut, align up the holes, get your cotter key back in place, and you're all set to go. One last close up of the assembly. As you can see, the cotter key is uh, bent back on both tanks. And as a final check, it's a good point at this time to keep the slip gear tool in place, as you can see here. Go back around to the other side of the bike and make sure that your breakaway torque is above 60 foot pounds. Now set it at 60 foot pounds, go up to 60, but don't go over 60 uh, because then you might do damage to the tool. And as a final note, uh, at this point, it's time to take all the tools uh, off of the bike, put the clutch cover back on, fill it with 10 ounces of clutch milk, and off you go.